Hey guys, we've now reached day 14 of Project 15. Today we're going to be reading from Mark and we're going to look at a story about Jesus responding to faith. Pause now to read the chapter. <laughs> I forgot. Good day, teenagers. Something you'll notice about the life of Jesus is that he performed a lot of miracles. Wherever he went, from town to town, village to village, crowds flocked to not only hear him teach, but to see him perform miracles as they brought people to him who had sicknesses and various diseases. But something which is remarkable is whenever Jesus performed a miracle, crowds didn't automatically put their trust in him and have their lives transformed. No, very often whenever Jesus performed miracles, crowds and people still rejected him. And in today's story, we read about two people who come to Jesus for miracles. One is a woman who comes to Jesus and begs him to heal her daughter who is possessed by an evil spirit. The second is a man who is deaf and has a speech impediment. Now we find Jesus, he's gone north, he's gone north of Israel on a bit of a holiday, a bit of a break away from people. But even in the north, people have heard about the preacher and the teacher from Galilee who can perform miracles. So even north, while he's on break, crowds flock to see him and a woman in the first story we read comes to him because her daughter is possessed by an evil spirit and it says that she begs Jesus to heal her daughter so notice it says that she begs Jesus and the way it's described is that she actually gets on all fours and she actually begs him and pleads with him to actually heal her daughter now, Jesus' response at first is surprising, but I think he's trying to teach the crowds a lesson through this woman's story. At first, he says, why should I give, why should I give the bread that is intended for the children of Israel? Now, what Jesus is saying is, I've performed a lot of miracles for people in Israel. Why should I now perform a miracle for you? I should be focusing my attention on them, even though they don't believe. And the woman's answer really impresses and excites Jesus. She says, that's true, Lord, but even the dogs under the table are allowed to eat the scraps from the children's plates. Now, dogs were not like dogs today. They weren't domesticated animals. They were quite wild. They roamed about the streets and they were untrained and untamed. And often what people would do is if they took pity on these dogs, they would chuck them scraps. And you can imagine children Children, it doesn't matter today, whether it's today or whether it was back then, children are very messy eaters. Whenever they eat, they throw a lot of food and a lot of scraps on the floor. So what households and owners would often do is they would sweep up those scraps and throw them to the dogs in the street so that they could eat. And what the woman was saying is she's saying, Jesus, I know that you performed a lot of miracles down in Israel, but people are still not believing. They're throwing your miracles away. So she says, give me the scraps because your scraps are enough to heal my daughter. And Jesus is so impressed with her faith. He's so impressed by her answer that he heals her daughter. And notice this, Jesus doesn't go with the woman to her house to see her daughter. He just heals on the spot because God has incredible power to heal no matter where he is in the world. Now in the second story, a man is brought to Jesus who also has great faith, who has also heard all the incredible things that Jesus has done in Israel. And he wants an audience with Jesus because he is deaf and he has a speech impediment. Now we know that most deaf people have some sort of speech impediment because they can't hear the words that they're saying, so they tend to stutter. So this man has this speech impediment. And Jesus does something pretty gross, something that we might find a bit strange. He spits on his fingers and then he puts his fingers into the man's ears and says, be opened. Now this is quite strange, but people in Jesus's day had this strange idea. They had this strange idea whenever they went to healing sanctuaries or they went to doctors, they kind of believed that spit had healing properties. They kind of believed that spit was medicinal. Now they didn't have the same scientific knowledge that we have today and they didn't have the same access to medication like we have today, but they believed that spit had medicinal healing properties. So Jesus kind of plays to the crowd and to their expectations. Now Jesus could have 
healed this man. He could have healed his deafness and his speech impediment without using spit or without putting his fingers into the man's ears. He just did it as part of the demonstration to show the audience that he is the one who truly has the power to heal. And what does it say? He says, be opened. And the ears of this man is opened. And importantly, his speech impediment is now also healed. And what does it say? It says that the crowds were amazed. The crowds were amazed by what Jesus has said, that even Jesus, something is special about Jesus because he, unlike anybody around him, had the power to not only heal deaf people, but to heal people who had speech impediments. And notice now this man who had the speech impediment can now go and tell people about all of the wonderful things that Jesus had done for him. And I want you to remember this important truth here. In both of these stories, Jesus responds to faith. It is the faith of the woman in the first story and it is the faith of this man that Jesus responds to and heals out of their faith. And the Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. In fact, yes, Jesus has died on us on the cross for our sins and that is a free gift of salvation. But the way that we access the forgiveness of sins is by receiving it through faith. If somebody gives you a gift, what do you have to do? You have to receive the gift. Now, God has given us eternal life, salvation and the forgiveness of sins as a gift. When we put our faith and our trust in God, we accept that gift and then we become children of God. So thank you so much for joining us here today. Let's now go into our seven minutes of prayer and we'll see you next time.